Our next keynote is uh, Anil Inamdar, who is the head of US consulting and delivery at Instacluster. And he's gonna be talking about, I should uh, press this button here and bring him on stage. Uh, he's gonna be talking about working with contributors. And uh, well, I won't take any more of your time, but uh, thank you so much for, for uh, joining us here. All right, thanks, Rick. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Good evening. I believe that uh, we might be covering all the time zones here. Um, hope you're enjoying the conference so far. Um, and this virtual conference kind of a new experience for all of us, but I think we are doing the best we can. So as Rich mentioned already, my name is Anil Inandar. I'm the VP of consulting for InstaCluster. My topic today is um, a rising tide lifts all boats, working with contributors of all sizes. Now, uh, before we begin with the topic of my discussion, a few words on InstaCluster. InstaCluster is a 100% open source company providing services in various open source technologies, Cassandra, Kafka, Elasticsearch, Redis. We offer three distinct services. Um, if you're looking for reliable 24 by seven support in open source technologies, we can do that. If you want to focus on your core business and want somebody else to manage open source technologies for you, um, infrastructure, software uh, support, we can do that as well. Finally, we offer consulting services in open source technologies like strategy design, architecture, development, training. Uh, we are your one-stop shop for open source technologies. We started in 2013 in Australia and currently have offices in Bay Area, Boston, Europe, and of course, uh, Canberra, Australia. Uh, within a short period of time, we have attracted several recognizable brands, uh, Atlassian, IBM, Dream11, T-Mobile, many more. Um, this kind of a brief uh, platform overview on the top, we have the open source technologies we support and the slides needs to be updated. We do support Redis now. <laughs> uh, at the bottom, uh, we have all the cloud and on-prem on -prem platforms for deployment. In the middle, we, we have all the services that we provide, um, uh, provisioning, monitoring, scaling, security, backup, recovery. All right, so uh, let's get on to the topic of the day today. Uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, working with contributors of all sizes. Now the phrase, uh, rising tide lifts all boats is a familiar one, used in stock markets, sports, and other domains. Now, how does it apply to open source technology? Let's find out. Now, before we um, uh, talk about open source technologies, let's look at a very familiar industry, the auto industry. Um, US took the lead in auto industry starting in the early 1900s. Um, Henry Ford's assembly line and Model T was a revolution. It made cars both popular and affordable. This in turn started a chain reaction. The Highway Act of 1921 focused on con uh, construct constructing roads. Rockefeller Standard Oil and other refineries found a new source of, uh, a source of consumers. The car tourism, something we take for granted now, was kicked off around that time. Travel required gas station, motels, fast foods. There were hundreds of complementary businesses and, businesses and services that the auto industry kicked off. Uh, tires and radio and AAA, all of these diverse industries did one thing. They all helped grow the auto industry. The US and then the global auto market grew by leaps and bounds. It is still continuing. The rising tide of different domains working together, the government, auto manufacturers, oil producers, ancillary car industries, like uh, we discussed tire, radio, OEM, motels, gas station, lifted everyone involved. The, consu the consumers and the market for every industry grew with this collaboration. Now, we may not be able to directly compare the US auto market with the open source market, but there are several parallels. So let's uh, quickly review the progression of the open source ecosystem to set the right context. 
Um, now, there are no hard dates, but in 1990s, there was a revolution in the software. It was primarily against the closed uh, source community. Individual collaborators worked asynchronously on projects that they were passionate about. The initial licensing model was completely free with a caveat that there may not be support or an immediate fix to a bug. Linux and MySQL are two good examples. The next wave started somewhere in 2000. I'm calling it the, um, the expansion. The software in this case was built with commercial customers in mind. It was typically developed in a company in the beginning and was later moved to a foundation, like Hadoop was started in Yahoo, Kafka in LinkedIn, Cassandra in Facebook. The core software was free, but several vendors started offering enhancements and could charge licensing fees. Along with enhancements, these vendors also supported their version of the product. The current wave is going, af going after enterprise customers. The cloud is playing an integral part of the offering. In this wave, the software contributors are primarily from commercial businesses. The licensing model is like the expansion phase, but the cloud vendors have their own twists. There are more players in the market, vendors working on the software and custom features, companies supporting their core business with the technology and therefore contributing heavily, cloud vendors offering managed services for these technologies. Also, open source has become an integral part of every organization's enterprise strategy. So with the new dynamics in the market, do individual open source projects and the foundation have a role to play? The answer is a resounding yes. The foundation continues to define and enhance the objectives of the open source community. The foundation also sets standards, developmental, operational. It also provides unbiased arbitration framework. The foundation also helps evangelize a critical project. A project really kicks off when the foundation is behind it. The foundation in many cases provides project infrastructure, JIRA boards, issue tracking, CI, CD, mailing list. It also provides IP and trademark protection. Apart from all this, the project and the foundation play another key role. The individual projects and the foundation are also the mothership for all open source contributor, uh, contributors. Contributors of all sizes and types, large businesses, cloud providers, technology vendors, support and managed service providers, continue to contribute to many projects, thereby helping directly or indirectly to the foundation. Now, um, let, let's take let's take an example. So our company started with uh, uh, Cassandra. So uh, I'll take that example. Um, Cassandra was initially developed in Facebook. It was released as an open source project on, on, on Google in 2008. In 2009, it became an Apache incubator project. Um, in February 2010, it was graduated to a top level project. Cassandra is currently used for mission critical application uh, at various companies. Today, companies like Netflix and Apple are contributing to, to the project, primarily supporting their internal requirements, but benefiting the entire community. Vendors like Datastax offering proprietary features also contribute to the project. They are developing both common features for the community as well as proprietary features. Similarly, my company, InstaCluster, also contributes to the project. So far, uh, we have contributed over 100 patches and currently working on several new patches, including a key functionality, Transparent Data Encryption, TDE. This feature is required by uh, several banks and other enterprise clients. Apart from these uh, contributors, there are several individual contributors who are contributing to the project. Some of the most widely used features were started as suggestions from individual contributors. When a suggestion is good, the community gets behind the feature. And some of the biggest names like Netflix or Apple or Uber participate in testing and benchmarking. This is no doubt creates a great feeling for the individual contributor. The project and the foundation create a level, level playing field for contributors of every size and type. Netflix and Apple may be competing on certain streaming services or other applications, but when it comes to contributing to the project and the foundation, they don't care. Datastax and InstaCluster are competitors on some of the services that we provide, 
But when it comes to contributing to the project and the foundation, we don't care. Whether the contributor is a heavyweight in the industry or just an individual contributor, the community does not care. Now, contributors of different sizes also create a lot of conflicts. Now, let's take uh, product growth as an example. Now, some of the giants in the market want to focus their contributions on stability. They may not be too keen on adding new features. Similarly, there are vendors who are interested in enhancing the product and want to add tons of features. Now, this is a real life example happening right now. Another example is a way Cassandra is deployed. There are certain giants who want the public cloud support while there are others who prefer deployment in their own data centers. Now we talked about um, individual contributors on the previous slide. One might think that an individual contributor may be sidelined by the giants, but I wanted to provide some specific examples of their contributions uh, for Cassandra project. Python 3 migration, Cassandra 4.2 documentation, SQL SH bug fixes. These are also some good examples where individual contributors have played a good role. So the, the conflicts that I talked about ultimately end up benefiting the entire community and Cassandra user base. We get both stability and features. We get support for both public cloud as well as your own data centers. On top of all this, there are several features picked up by individual contributors and ultimately the entire Cassandra community is benefited. Now, why do contributors of all sizes willing to work together? The reason is that there are more people, more businesses, more vendors, more, contribu contrib more, uh, more contributors to the project. Uh, there are many open source projects uh, today in the market um, in every domain of technology, from DevOps to IT operations to data to analytics. The, the contribution is not only code. Okay? There are many kinds of contributions that are necessary for projects, code reviews, preparing a release, translation, utilities, documentation, infrastructure, facilities. The open source code base is growing, as you can see from the graph. Um, so what has happened to the open source market and the revenues? As you can see from the graph, again, uh, it, is, it, it has been growing steadily. For the past 12 to, 15, uh, 12 to 15 years ago, open source was still considered a risky strategy by enterprise customers. But today, open source is a critical component of every enterprise strategy. Open source has transitioned from labs and experiments to boardrooms. CEOs define their competitive edge through the use of open source, while the CFOs look at open source to reduce costs without adding additional risks. Open source is embraced by all kinds of businesses, companies of different sizes, companies with different business models, collaborators, partners, competitors, companies that have just started their journey with open source or companies that are veterans. This has created a virtuous cycle. More adoption begets more usage, begets more products, begets more adoption, a rising tide lifting all boats. So in summation, the key to success for open source is to work together and to continue to contribute back to the projects and foundation. We saw what happened to the auto industry when multiple domains started working together and towards a common goal. The auto market continued to grow for the past 100 years. We can do the same thing for open source market and ecosystem. But of course, with much reduced impact to the environment. No contribution is small. It's like a political campaign. There are always big donors, but individual donors collectively play, play a big role. And in some cases, like Obama's 2008 campaign, a significant role. You can be a small company or you can be a large company. You can be a collaborator or a competitor working on one project or multiple projects. If we keep the projects and the foundation above our selfish market and economic goals, we will all benefit. A rising tide lifts all boats. I want to end with an African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So let's go far. Thank you. I also encourage you to stop by our Insta Cluster booth to get a $1.25 gift card from Amazon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anil, for that, for that message.